You're on Meet the Press. Since 1943, the Institute of Public Affairs has been active in the public debate. It says in the name of free enterprise. Its critics see it as hard line. It's entered the carbon tax debate with a vengeance, adopting a sceptical stance, one that the Prime Minister challenges. Carbon pricing is the right thing to do for this nation's future if we want to have a prosperous economy in the future with all of the clean energy jobs of the future then we've got to get on with pricing carbon. And it's welcome to the program IPA Executive Director John Roscombe. Good morning John. Good morning Paul. I guess with this whole carbon tax debate the departure point has to be if if global warming isn't being made worse by humanity, uh, then we're wasting our time and our money. Is that pretty much where, you, where you're at? Well, that's right, Paul. We believe the science is unsettled and the economics is disastrous. Australia is going alone only because of the political pressures on the government. So you wouldn't share, for example, uh, Rupert Murdoch's view expressed, I must admit, some years ago now, that maybe we should give the benefit, the, the planet, the benefit of the doubt? Well, of course you should look after the planet, but the point is, what impact is the carbon tax going to have? The IPA has argued for well over a decade that we don't need a carbon tax, we don't need an emissions trading scheme, and of course, that wasn't the view of the major parties for a long time. So we represented a view that wasn't in the mainstream debate for a long time, but is now, which is, is good. Isn't this an argument that we could be left behind? I mean, as you say, it's been out there for 10 years, or actually more, really. Longer, that's debate. right. Uh, uh, others are moving. Uh, doesn't Australia have to start moving in some way or other? No. Australia relies on cheap energy for our productive economy. The Chinese are going to continue to be pumping out carbon emissions. The Europeans are not doing much, the Americans are backing away. And for the claim that Australia needs to start now and go it alone is crazy. We should only consider it, if ever, if our main trading partners do the same, which they won't do. Mr Roscombe, you say we don't need a carbon tax and we don't need an emissions trading scheme. Uh, I assume you take the same position about Tony Abbott's direct action plan, spending, proposing to spend billions of dollars on uh, soil carbon and tree planting and so forth? That's right, we don't need it. The point is we need to look at what our trading partners are doing. Australia relies on clean, cheap energy. And the point is that if we're going to do this, we are going to devastate the economy as the unions are now recognising, as many people in the Labor Party are now recognising, and as now fortunately the public debate is moving towards that position. Mr Roskin, that, that was exactly the argument that was mounted against both attempts to bring in a, a, a mining super profits tax, which is still unsettled. Uh, the threat was that, that, that investment would collapse, that confidence would collapse in the mining sector. That clearly hasn't happened. What, why should it be any different this time around? Well, the point about the mining tax is that it has impacted on global confidence in the Australian economy. We saw the head of uh, Anglo-American, for example, coming out and saying that uh, a number of projects are now under threat. The point is... That's not an ambit claim? No. The point is the Australian economy is booming. And what we need to do is to secure that productivity. And you don't do it by whacking on a whole new series of taxes. Do you, do you think there will be pressure back on Tony Abbott to ditch his direct action? I mean, there's a logic to what you say. Uh, surely that logic would have, would, would have to, uh, certainly the penny at least, would have to drop within, within the coalition. Well, there, there may be, Paul. And the point about direct action, however, is that you can modify and change it and not drop it, and drop it if necessary. Mm. It's not like a carbon tax which is a slug on the entire but economy. That, but that's a pretty perverse position for a free enterprise organisation to take, that uh, you, pr pr you prefer direct action, that is spending of taxpayers' dollars by a government in particular areas of the economy over a market trading system. No, we don't necessarily prefer direct action. We don't prefer an imposition on families and individuals. The point is that Australia can't go it alone if our trading partners are not doing the same. And this is the point the Prime Minister hasn't really been able to, to answer that's, as yet. That's just a recipe for no one ever doing anything, though, because no country's ever going to go alone. Well, not necessarily. On Australia logic. is 1% of global emissions. But it's a de leading developed country. It's the 14th largest economy in the world, and it has a lot of power, a lot of sway in, in, in the Mark, I, of the world. Mark, I wish you were right. I wish the Chinese, I wish the Americans, I wish the Euro Europeans 
would follow Australia's lead on democracy, on free markets and a whole bunch of other things. But the reality is they don't. We are a small player, we are a price taker and we need to follow our trading partners, not lead them. Mr Oscar, you wrote a, a very entertaining piece just recently uh, uh, analysing what a carbon tax or an ETS would do to the price of a birthday cake, harking back to that famous interview which killed off the first attempt by John Hewson to bring in um, a, a, a GST. Um, what's wrong with a complex tax system? Isn't that a sign of a sophisticated economy? Why should it be so simple that you can explain it in one sentence? The point of a complex tax system is that Australians don't have control over their lives. Tax is a major imposition of the government. If we can't understand the tax system, if we can't understand a carbon tax, then we have a real problem. And I think it's a democratic problem. We need to be able to understand our tax laws, whether they're a carbon tax, whether they're a mining tax, or whether they're anything else. Well, is it a matter of uh, whether we understand or whether we want to? For example, I don't understand the diesel fuel rebate. I do How it applies, I do understand that, that it's there. You know what I mean? Well, that, that's right. But the carbon tax impacts on every single person and on every single thing we does. In a way, the diesel fuel rebate doesn't. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister, Penny Wong, Kevin Rudd said the carbon tax is a transformation of the Australian economy. And for goodness sake, should, isn't it time we all did try and understand it? And the point of the carbon tax is you can't. Thank you very much for being with us today, John Roskam. Thanks, Paul. And thanks also to our panel, Mark Kenny and Claire Harvey. A transcript and a replay of this program will be on our website and our Facebook page. Enjoy your Easter break. Until next week, goodbye.